What's up my friend, uh, today I'll be reacting to the true reason why the F-22 Raptor can kill anything in the sky. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? Uh, if you can leave a like on this video, thank you so much for that. It's the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, oh man, in that case, uh, forget about it. You make my day, have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. It has not up recommending this one quite a lot, so, well, let's play it. The true reason. By the way, every time I react to military stuff related with uh, America, blows my mind. And you guys keep recommending videos that are even crazier. Let's see this one. Reason why the F-22 Raptor can kill anything in the sky. Anything really? Let's see it. I mean, This sound a bit tired. With Russia and China deploying advanced new fighters and surface-to-air missiles, mm. the task of gaining and maintaining air superiority over an increasingly more lethal battle space falls to a small and elite group of U.S. Air Force pilots flying the mighty Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. So, I know my country have F-16s, and those are also quite good, right? But I don't think we have F-22. Conceived during the waning years of the Cold War, the stealthy, high-flying, supersonically cruising Raptor was designed to defeat the most fearsome weapons the Soviet Union could hurl at the United States and NATO. So stealth, high-fly, and supersonic. That's crazy already. During a third world war in Europe. However, with the end of the Cold War and subsequent 1991 collapse of the Soviet Union, the F-22 was left without a mission, or so it was thought. Indeed, the second Bush and Obama administrations canceled the F-22 program in 2008 after only 195 aircraft. Wait, so the idea of the F-22 was basically World War III? I mean, just saying, things are not looking that great nowadays. Maybe they, they can have a reason, I'm not sure. 187 production planes were ordered because they made the assumption that high-end state-on-state -state conflicts were a relic of the past. What? They really thought that? That's crazy. I, uh, maybe I, I'm always a bit uh, negative about conflict around the world, but I feel like humans, they, they tend to always, all of a sudden, oh, we end to fight. L let me run that back because I want to understand a bit better why Obama and Bush did that. Sorry, guys. Without a mission, or so it was thought. Indeed, the second Bush and Obama administrations okay. canceled the F-22 program in 2008 after only 195 aircraft, 187 production planes were ordered because they made the assumption that high-end state-on-state conflicts were a relic of the past. That surprises me, my friends. Especially Obama, not that much, but Bush, with the 9-11 situation, how can he even think about that, right? I mean, America have a lot of enemies. I mean, I think this is not even our take, right? Okay. I mean, that, I, probably the military was so ahead even at the time that they think, yeah, we, we may not even need those. Uh, we are fine with what we have. But still, this is something to... I, I would love to know your, your perspective on this one. However, as it's becoming increasingly apparent, they were wrong. Okay. Why America needs the F-22 Raptor, now more than ever. Now, with voices on the left and right clamoring for action in Syria, where the Kremlin is propping up its longtime ally, the Assad regime, the Pentagon finds that it has to rely on its tiny fleet of 186 F-22 Raptors if the call... And by the way, this video is actually three or four years old, so there was not a lot of the wars we have right now. So this makes even more sense now. Fascinating. ...to establish a no-fly zone or a safe zone in that war-torn nation. The Raptor is the only operational combat aircraft that the United States operates that Washington can rely on to take on and defeat advanced air defenses such as the Panzer S-1, S-300 V4, and S-400 that Moscow has dispatched to Syria. 
Holy Moreover, moly. it's the only aircraft in the U.S. Air Force inventory that possesses a huge performance overmatch against late-generation Russian fighters such as the Su-30SM Flanker H and the Su-35S Flanker E, both of which the Kremlin has also deployed to the region. Our role is to kick down the door, First Fighter Wing Commander Colonel Pete Fessler, a veteran F-22 Raptor pilot, told me during a visit to Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, we are, without a doubt, on the leading edge of whatever force you're going to send because we have an airplane that has a capability that no one else has. Okay, so maybe this is a stupid question. When I said Portugal don't have those, that's normal, right? No one have those apart from, uh, from America. Okay, interesting. This seems a tremendous plane, actually. Is this the best plane uh, that you guys have in, in the in uh, the US military because it seems like you know almost have superpowers training matters okay but while it's important to have the right tools more important is the human dimension pilots and maintainers must be trained and ready to defeat the highest end threats if they're to be sent into combat the Raptor pilots, while they're still a critical component, are still just one part of a team. Nothing's going to happen unless the maintainers can get the airplanes running. The low observable maintainers can keep the skin healthy, the munitions guys can build the bombs and missiles, and the weapons loaders can get them on the airplane. The air traffic controllers can launch them, intel folks can prep the pilots for the mission they're going to do. All those things have to come together, and if they get out of sync, None of it works. The ultimate insurance policy. In many ways, the Raptor is the U.S. Air Force's insurance policy. While the rest of the Air Force has been preparing for and fighting low-intensity warfare scenarios, as an elite vanguard force, the Raptor fleet has focused almost exclusively on defeating the highest-end threats. We've been focused on the high end. Okay, so, okay, my friends, the thing is with me, I always ask a lot of stupid questions and I, lo I do a lot of pauses. You guys should be aware already. But uh, one of the planes that impressed me the most was the A-10 Warthog. So this, that's a completely different plane than this one. The Warthog is basically 12 people on the ground. I think I'm correct on that. This one is basically what actually i'm not sure so to, this is trying to destroy the equivalent of them on the enemy maybe i'm, I'm not so sure but, or, or trying to to eat really specific targets uh, like the ones they end up showing previous could be that basically things that are super impactful for the war but the a10 artog is more helping the soldiers on the ground Maybe I'm saying a lot of BS, but uh, I'm trying to make some logic, my friends. Threat all along, Fessler said. And uh, really, really damn question now. The Artog versus the F-22 is not even a fight, right? The F-22 seems, um, again, an uh, alien type of plane that would completely annihilate the, the Artog, I assume. In fact, the departure from standard for us is the times we... Artog or Wartog? I know it's the A-10. We go over to Operation Inherent Resolve, the counter ISIS campaign, and do the close air support type missions over there. Okay. Low intensity conflict is not our bread and butter. Even since the earliest days when the Raptor entered operational testing in 2002, the F-22 has performed incredibly well in simulated combat. Just a second. I will run it back. For one reason, I have to analyze the design a bit better of this one. Okay. The earliest days when the Raptor entered op Nice legs go, okay. Operational testing in 2002. This is a beautiful plane. I like it. The F-22 has performed incredibly well in simulated combat. Yeah. Amassing lopsided victories in the air, even when flying against the most challenging simulated threats. Advanced Russian fighters such as the Su-35 and the S-300V4 and S-400, it's exceedingly rare for the F-22 to be shot down. Losses in the F-22 are a rarity regardless of the threat we're training against, Fessler said. 
Okay. Why the Raptor dominates. Indeed, one of the problems for the F-22 is to generate enough targets and a tough enough threat so that pilots get some useful training. Another what? Is really that powerful? Okay, I'm digging this one. Problem hmm. is Leave a like if you enjoy this type of reactions, by the way. It's very important. The jet is so capable in terms of its sheer speed, acceleration, stealth, sensors and maneuverability, it actually compensates for tactical errors. It makes up for a lot of shortcomings in the pilot side. You can have a really bad day and the airplane will still do phenomenally well, said one senior F-22 pilot who goes by the call sign Crash. Just because you win it. the fight doesn't mean you did well. Just because you lost doesn't mean you screwed up. We build scenarios to track that. So there are times when guys will die in training when they did everything right. And there's other... Die in training? Oh no. Other times, dudes are screwing up left and right, and they're completely successful. But in this airplane, it's much easier to survive. Because the jet is so capable, and the pilots are the elite of the elite, the red air has to effectively overwhelm the Raptors with sheer numbers. Crash described one scenario where four F-22s took on 10 fourth-gen enemy aircraft similar to a Su-35 simultaneously, and which regenerate or come back to life. A little bit more than your typical fourth gen, Crash said. We're not training against things that are not operational yet. We're fighting against the most advanced operational threats we can. Typically, the blue F-22s will slaughter the enemy from long range. Indeed, as Fessler notes, if an enemy aircraft has survived to enter the merge or visual range combat and finds a Raptor, something has gone terribly wrong. That usually leads okay. to an intensive debrief. So really good at long range. Since have stealth, I'm assuming. This is a beast of a plane. To understand what went wrong. Indeed, all of the pilots I spoke to unanimously told me that the debrief is the most important part of a training sortie. Nonetheless, F-22 pilots train extensively for a visual range fight. We usually train full up versus full up, Crash said. We assume that a Western-trained F-22 is going to be the most challenging threat we're going to go against. A big upgrade and something needed. One recent addition to the Raptors at Langley is the new Block 3.2A Update 5 software. At long last, the new upgrade adds the Raytheon AIM 9X Sidewinder High Off Boresight Missile Something long Don't understood a single thing that he said there. What? Coveted by the F-22 community, the addition of the AIM-9X is a huge improvement for the Raptor. The addition of the new weapon greatly increases the F-22's already formidable lethality. That's even though Upgrade 5 is an interim capability, the AIM-9X and the Raytheon AIM-12OD AMRAAM missiles will be fully integrated onto the Raptor with the Increment 3.2B upgrade, which is yet to be fielded. The one okay, so new software allows different weapons, I'm assuming. Different type of missiles. Is that uh, the case? One thing that the F-22 is still lacking is a helmet-mounted queuing system, HMCS. That would be used to exploit the outer edges of the AIM-9X's capabilities. It's a feature that's common on most US fighter aircraft and most foreign ones. This is a beautiful plane, actually. It looks so clean. I love it. The lack of such a system would normally place the Raptor at a severe disadvantage in a dogfight if the aircraft didn't perform as well as it does. The Air Force is still planning on adding such a helmet-mounted queuing system to the F-22, but pilots at the first fighter wing say that's not an absolute necessity. The Raptor can usually dominate a fight even without such a system. Indeed, as Fessler noted, even without the AIM-9X or a HMCS, F-22 pilots often close into gun range and ambush other jets in visual range. I can sneak up on a guy, Fessler said. In the F-22, I convert on guys and they never even see you there. You roll up right behind them and go, why waste a missile when you have a gun? Ultimately, as the U.S. Air Force's only dedicated fifth-generation air superiority fighter in an increasingly hostile world, where the threat grows more challenging every day, it's in the service's best interest to ensure the Raptor remains as capable as possible. Right now, the Air Force is slated to equip the F-22 with a helmet-mounted sight by 2020. 
but similar efforts have. I don't get why the the element being upgraded would be such a big deal, because uh, they have a screen with everything. Also, it's just to not do this. I, I maybe I'm being a bit, you know, not. I'm lacking knowledge on this department. <laughs> Have fallen prey to budget cuts in the past. The helmet would be awesome to have, but it's not a game changer for us, Crash said. But a helmet mounted hmm. sight would help us a lot. Oh, so they, they can also do this type of stuff, right? And and still have in, in control what's going on. Okay, that, that makes actually a lot of sense. Beast of a plane. Really enjoyed this one. F22. So this was a recommendation that I got uh, from one of you guys and, and when I was searching for the video I also saw there is a video from Infographics that says why the F-22 beats everything in the air, something like that also and uh, from what I, I was doing a preview seems like they even compare with Russia, uh, not Russia, China, Chinese uh, planes that try to destroy the F-22 I was thinking should I react to this or this one and I'm going with this one should I react also to, to the other one, or do you guys think this, this covers enough? Um, this is a fascinating plane, actually. Oh, great video again. Hey, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Really open up enjoying this uh, this video. Um, I love to react to military stuff. Uh, sometimes, again, um, I admit I'm a bit ignorant when it comes to this type of, uh, of videos, but on the other hand, probably that what makes fun is me learning about um, all of those crazy planes, crazy aircrafts, uh, etc. But yeah, do not forget to leave a like, subscribe, all the good stuff. And uh, also tell me if you would love me to react to, to that video that... Uh, basically see uh, explains even in in a uh, in in better detail why the f-22 is one of the best uh, planes that you can have in war bye my friends see you guys next time